everything on my face. All right, so this is uh, the sixth take that we've done of this because it's a lot harder than I thought. I don't know how I should start this. Hey, my <laughs> oh, No, I shouldn't say, I can't say, I can't say that. Okay. Hey. It's RJ, the director of Fantastic Magic, and I decided to crawl out of my cave today to show you guys a trick that I would have taught when I was working at Magic Camp. I worked teaching at a Magic Camp for three summers and two summers in Shanghai, China at a Magic Camp. So I'm gonna show you guys something that we would do. I prefer doing stage magic, I'm not much of a close-up guy, but this is a really good trick that translates from close-up to kind of a parlor, and you can even really do it on the stage if you really play it right. So this is a really easy signed card effect that is has a few subtleties in it that are really good for the, the pro magician, I think. All right, so we're using our Phantasma Rubik's card. If you have a prediction card in the envelope, you can show it. I won't tell you which one it is yet, and I'll set that to the side. So exclusive. The, <laughs> exclusive. So the first thing I do is have the spectator select a card. Uh, this time we're going to pick the Four of Clubs. I'm gonna write my name on the Four of Clubs. You usually want the spectator to write their name on the Four of Clubs, very important. And you can put that in the middle of the deck, get the deck a shuffle. And you have your prediction there. Make sure that they're watching the prediction the whole time because if the prediction isn't, it gets out of sight or something like that, they think you do something weird. The spectator just selected the card, you mixed up the deck, and then you have your prediction right here that's been sitting on the table the whole time. And hopefully you take it out. One card has been in the envelope and that has been their selected card, which is really sick because it's been in this envelope which they can then examine at the end or you can tear it up. So, I think I needed this envelope. Oh, you right. <laughs> so you're gonna need a few things for this trick. All you really need is one deck of cards. If you really don't wanna mess up one deck, you could use two different decks. And then you're going to need a pair of scissors and an envelope. Now you're going to want an envelope that has one of these weird lips. I don't know what they're called because I'm a millennial, but you don't want one that looks like we don't have one. You don't want one of the triangle ones because the triangle ones are a little bit too long and you'll see why. So the idea is that you wanna take your card and you wanna cut a corner off. Now, you don't have to use these cards, but I would honestly recommend using a B deck or some deck without borders because you'll see why in a little bit. But the idea is that you wanna cut the deck or cut the card so that you have the corner about this much. And the cool thing is that you're gonna put this in the envelope and you want it to, if you have a window, make sure to be careful that you don't put it in the window, but you want it to stick out of the envelope this much because you're just gonna show it, but you're never gonna fully show the card. And this allows you to make it look like you're pulling the card out of the envelope. This also allows you to make the envelope empty at the end, which is important because you could just do this with a duplicate, but we're trying not to do this with a duplicate. So you're gonna set that here at the beginning, you're gonna show your card and you're gonna put that on the side. And I'm using a different color card just so you guys can see. And then we're going to have the deck. So you're gonna have a selected card from the middle or wherever they take the card out, and they're gonna have them sign their name on the card. And this is just because it's more impressive to do a signed card trick than it is not to do a signed card trick, in my opinion. So now you can do your favorite control, and I'm gonna show you one that I really like, and this is from a, this is from a card to table effect that I really like. However, I'm just taking one move from it, and it's a lapping the card. Because a lot of people overthink like controls and things like that, but if you really just, I'll show you. You take a card, you put it in the middle, and you can do any control you wanna do. You can do a double undercut, you can get it back to the top. Because when you get it to the top, all I'm going to do is scoot up in my chair to make it look like I'm leaning in and tell you something important. But at the same time, I do this, and that's gonna let me drop the card into the lap. And it's a really easy move that magicians don't suspect. So don't take this for granted, because magicians typically don't notice this move, and it's a really great move. So keeping it on the table, or excuse me, keeping it on the top of the deck, you're going to move up and push it, uh, push it into your lap. So now you have the deck with your card, their sign card in your lap, and it's really, really clean. So then they can shuffle it or do whatever they want to do. So there's a few different ways that you can do this, uh, the next part, which is loading the card. So you want to load the card by either doing a palm, where you can palm the card and bring it underneath the envelope, which it looks like this, where you just keep it palmed, you come over like that, that's how easy it is, it's really simple. You can do that, or what I like to do is a move that I read in uh, Apocalypse, which is actually uh, Harry Lorraine's magazine that he used to send out, where it was a move where all you do is come over with your right hand and you raise up whatever object you're trying to load with your left hand. So this is typically used with like an ace assembly or something like that, where you can show all the aces, but this is usually 
Uh, how I usually use this is just with the envelope and I'll bring it up to the envelope and now it's underneath. So you can really display it really cleanly if you want. You put your thumb on the card corner and what you're doing is bringing it out. And then you're going to show the card. So here you can see the contrast and with the bicycle deck, you can kind of see it. It'll be in the middle so you'll see it's not like normal how it usually should look. However, with the Rubik's deck or with the B deck or anything like that, with the corner like this, when you bring it out, it's really clean because the pattern makes it so you can't see the card. So you can really do a really clean display of the card. And then the move is when the card is underneath, you're going to grab it, pinch and bring it out quickly. Because if you bring it out quickly, you won't be able to see the moment when it happens. But if you have a really long triangle envelope, that will make it a lot more space to go through before it meets the card. So it'll kind of be more like, my hands are probably sticky enough to do this. It'll look more like that, which is a little bit easier to see. So that's why we use this small panel envelope because that way we can just reach inside. Yeah, you reach inside, you pull it out at the same time. And it's super, super clean with this pattern. I never, used to, I never did it with a pattern before, but I think it's super important that you do it with a pattern if you're gonna do this trick. From the beginning, this is what it looks like. You have your card, load it in, and keep watching at the end because I'll show you a few different controls that you guys can do to make this maybe a little bit more convincing or more your style. But we start off like this. We're gonna show the prediction card in here. We're not gonna tell them what it is. We set it to the side. You have someone pick a card and you use your favorite control to get it back to the top. Then from there, I'm going to scoot up and then I'm gonna set the cards down, let them shuffle if they want, and then note the card. Make sure if it's like this, make sure if it's like that, you're gonna to have to look down and maybe adjust it, but you just do this as they're shuffling or something like that, cause it's not a big deal, you know, you're just adjusting yourself. So then you come over to the envelope, you grab the card, you scoop it up, you show the prediction, bring it out, and then you can show it really clean. So a few subtleties that you can do in the trick version that I did, I did a center double lift. So what that looks like is you go down the deck and usually you see people doing this with Sharpies. It's very weird to pick up a card with a Sharpie in my opinion, so I don't do that. But you can go down the middle of the deck, you stop with your middle finger, your right hand middle finger. We're in a biddle grip with the other hand or we're in, oops, we're in mechanics grip with the other hand. You stop with your middle finger of the card Stop, and then you uh, let another one go also. So you stop again, twice, one, two. Then what I do is use my middle finger to pivot the card. I'm going to the right, get your thumb out of the way and you pivot it to the right around your middle finger of your left hand. And then you can show the card and have someone sign it. This is kind of a weird position to have someone sign it, but I like this because no one ever suspects a double lift from the middle. So I have them sign it like that and you just grab the edge and then you can flip it back down. So at speed, this looks really smooth because you can take the card, have them sign it and put it back down. They never suspect a double lift. <laughs> so I found this in a Bill Malone lecture. This is a really cool card control that is also a palm at the same time. So what I do from this one, or for this one is a middle double. I'll go from the middle, grab the two cards, and then I'll show the card, have them sign it. I'll put it in the middle. And then what I do is a tap like this. And that allows you to palm the card from the top of the deck. So what I'm doing here, one more time, is you do your double, one, two, or really anything you want to get your double lift on the top. You can really do it like this, if that's how you double lift. And you turn it over and put it in the middle. And I'm coming over with my hand. And with my hand, I'm almost doing an Erdnase change, almost. But when I lift, not lift it, when I slide it a little bit, and tilt my hand down, it'll click into your hand almost like a one hand top palm. So from here, I can then take it and tap that second fake card into the middle of the deck. So at speed, it, from an exposed angle, it looks like this, one, two, tilt it out, show the card or have it signed, put it in the middle, and then I tap it in. So one more time at speed, you have your double lift, however you wanna get into your double lift. You have them sign the card, they put it in the middle, and then it's the action of the tap that lets you then palm the card. It's very, very quick. And I could either drop it here, you don't have to drop it, you really could go right into the envelope load if you want to, so you could really just like put it underneath here, but you have to twist it around. So there's a few different ways you could do this, but this is just a, a way that I like to control cards at the top. So. 
That is the card to envelope, signed card to envelope with a few different subtleties. This is uh, the best way to do this again is with a pattern deck because of that ability to show both sides very freely. I think it's very, uh, it's a very cool subtlety that you can add in this and you can make any card appear inside an envelope that is signed with a prediction beforehand. This might be one more thing. Remember, if you're doing this on a stage or for a talent show or for a magic show that you're doing, make sure that you have someone sign it, preferably with a bold marker. Make sure you show everyone. Make sure you use a colorful deck so then you can show you have a prediction here for the audience. Put it on the side and then make sure that it's bold, the bold marker, and then you can do whatever move you want to do to get it palmed. And you can do this standing up if you really want to. But this is a, this is a great trick for parlor for more than like 10 people. So that's what I would encourage you guys to do. Get out there and perform. Where did I go from here? In this video, we are giving away one Phantasma Rubik's deck. This is a deck that's made in collaboration with Rubik's and we are giving it away for free. All you have to do is comment in the comments, hashtag free Phantasma and drop your Instagram handle because then we'll contact you. We'll put it on our Instagram, put it on our story if you win and we'll send it out to you wherever you live in the United States because you have to live close. Maybe Canada, but I don't know, try your luck. <laughs> 